with part two of my top line building series. Um, this one is all about stretching. So this is the second part, which is very, very, very important as well. Before we get into the stretches and you see what I do with Ten and Theo um, after every ride, I do want to talk briefly about body work and body care. So my horses get chiropracted every month to every two months. So um, in between six to 12 times a year, they get an adjustment and it honestly, it could be sometimes two times a month. It just really depends on how they're moving and how they're feeling. After they get an adjustment, pretty, pretty soon after that, they will get a massage or um, on the same day. Um, it just kind of depends on the timing of it. I get my adjustments from Ann Harath. Harath? She is so good, so nice, very thorough. And the massages I get from Angel Bomarito, and she owns Moon Valley Sport Horses. I'm actually an ambassador for her. She is amazing. If you are local to St. Louis, St. Charles, anywhere, around the St. Louis area. She does massages and I believe they are $65, I think, I don't know. She's amazing and it's like a good like 45 minute massage for him. And Theo and Ten both absolutely love them. There is a huge difference between when they start or when she starts and when she ends and she takes before and after pictures and it's just crazy, like the, the transformation after that. So that is the body workers that I have do that. And then last but not least, I also have MagnaWave done every couple months. Uh, I don't do MagnaWave regularly. I get that done by a local woman. Her name is Diane and she's amazing. Um, it's like a 30 minute session and it really gives you a good idea of the areas that your horse is hurting. It gives you those pinpoint areas where it's like, ooh, there's some discomfort there. That's where we should focus on. So that's a huge reason why I like to get MagnaWave done. It is very informational. Now, do I see this crazy difference from like after a session? No, I don't. And I would say out of all three of those things that I do, chiropractic, if you can afford any of them, is probably the number one. That definitely would be the, the thing that I would spend most my my money on if I could only choose one out of the three. I would get an adjustment done. So all those things in conjunction um, really, really, really help your horse perform at its best and feel its best, that is that is the body work that I typically do. Now as far as anything else, I haven't really gotten into much other forms of body work. Um, I know Angel mentioned at one point she had a red light therapy thing, so we may try that next time and see how that goes. Chiropractic, massage, and magnetic. The one thing I will say, without the chiropractic adjustments and the massages, for one, it's really hard to build top line because if they're hurting somewhere and they're overcompensating somewhere else, they're, they're just not going to build the muscle right. So obviously, feed is number one. Number two, body care body work and stretches. I hope I don't piss anybody off by saying that if they're not like giving their horses chiropractic adjustments, but truthfully, it's so important. It's so important for your horse, if you're riding them, to take care of their bodies. It really is. It's, it's of the utmost importance. So if you can't afford a $95 chiropractic visit every other month, even every other couple months, you sh you should you should be competing a horse. It's just my opinion. Anyway, I just wanted to put that out there, and I do want to just say a disclaimer 
again, I'm not a vet, I'm not an equine nutritionist, I'm not a trainer, I am not in any way, shape, or form a professional. I own two thoroughbreds and I have learned a lot, um, especially with Ten. His He's needed a lot of, a lot of work. And these are just the things that I have found that have worked. Yeah, so with that being said, we, uh, we can get into the stretchy stretches and I'm gonna have to do a voiceover because at the barn the radio's on all the time, which is awesome, but not when you're filming YouTube videos because of um, copyright. For I'm gonna just make note the stretches that I do before I ride are very minimal because um, their muscles are not warmed up. Just very, very simple stuff. Really the only thing that I do is belly lift um, to get their back stretched out, get their abdominals kind of loosey. And then when I tighten the girth, I stretch out their front legs just to make sure nothing's pinched and just give a little itty bitty stretch. After I ride is when I do the majority of the stretches. So, anywho, we will get right into it and I hope you enjoy the stretches and seeing my cutie cutie bay boys. Alright, so the first stretch that I do is um, their front legs. So I will pull their front leg forward, um, not forcing anything, just pulling it forward and holding it and when he wants to take it back I let it go. And we'll do the other leg and with 10 you'll see in the following clips that I do circles. Theo is not quite at that point yet. He's not that flexible to do that. I've been doing these with 10 for almost two years now. So the next stretch that I do is going back to their back feet. Be careful when you start this one because sometimes they can kick out. Um, both of them usually when I grab them tend to kick a little bit and it's important not to force this one. Don't don't pull, don't stretch, just gently encourage the stretch and hold their leg. And do this on both back ones and then I will switch and um, instead of pulling up, then I pull back and encourage him to stretch down. To point their toes down and just really kind of stretch out their back leg. So now you can kind of see what I'm doing um, from this angle with the other leg. So he pulls it back, so I kind of let him pull that back and then I just very gently pull it forward. He does it again. Um, and when they're first learning these stretches like Theo is, it's, it takes some time. Ten still does it too. Um, but done with that one and then I'll go back and kind of stretch out, try to when you're putting pressure you kind of want to pull down and out not up so I'm just trying to get them to stretch straight so then I am going to do carrot stretches when they're first doing this their natural reaction is going to want to try and circle um, it took a little bit for Theo to understand what I was asking and um, now he does it just fine, but every once in a while he's like, Ugh, I don't want to do this. And then once he realizes what we're doing again, that he's fine. typically do three to four carrot stretches each side and I try to get them to hold it for at least a couple seconds. Um, the, the flexibility comes with the resistance so the longer they can hold it the more flexible they'll get. The next stretches I do are um, 
tail pull, so you pull out to each side. And what you want to see is them pretty much tucking their pelvis in. So um, right there, you can see where he kind of tightens it up and kind of tucks it in where I'm pointing at. That's what you want to see with these. Um, and on these, I do um, I try to do three each side, and I try to hold, get them to hold it for six seconds each time I do it. So three each side for six seconds each. So the next thing I'm going to do are belly lifts. Um, I typically take a hoof pick and just very gently rub it um, right where the girth goes. Um, that will cause them to arch their back and lift their back up. Um, some horses can be a little bit ticklish down there. Um, both of mine are, but um, it does end up feeling really good for them to kind of stretch their, stretch their back out. So on these, I try to do um, I try to do three or four of them and try to get them to hold them for five to six seconds if they can. So the last stretch that I do are um, butt tucks. So you basically run your fingertips or you can do a hoof pick just very gently down the back of their butt on each side and that will cause them to tuck their butt in and rotate their pelvis up in turn um, lifting their back and spreading the spinal processes apart um, it's actually really good that he has his head down and he's eating the leftover hay on the ground because it helps spread his spine apart even more so now it is 10's turn. Um, 10, I do the, basically the same things with. Um, he is a little bit more advanced in the stretches because we've been doing them longer. Um, this is his favorite one. He loves when I pull his front legs out because then he takes it as an opportunity to um, scratch his ankles. <laughs> as you can see, he starts here and he, that's, he loves doing that. Um, I do rotate. Um, I try to do five rotations left and right, but sometimes I forget on either side. But um, either way, I pull out and then try to do the rotations. And you want to do them from both directions, but again, I forget.
the last stretch that I do is a tail pull. Um, so this, you basically just grab a hold of the tail and um, kind of lean back and lower your weight and you should feel like a little bit of a pop, almost like your back cracking. Um, and this is almost like a spinal decompress for them. It's really, really good. Um, and then I am doing the uh, pelvic tucks with 10 as well. So this last stretch I'm going to do, um, I particularly do this with Ten because he did have a pole injury and this is what the uh, massage therapist had told me to work on. He's still not great at this. We've only been working on this for maybe a couple weeks or so. Um, basically you put your hands on the top of the pole, get them to put their chin on your shoulder and you just ever so slightly kind of pull down on the pole. This will stretch their pole out. It obviously is a little bit uncomfortable for him just because he does have that pole injury. Um, so I'm not forcing anything. If he pulls his head up, then he pulls his head up. Um, but you're not, there's no force in this. You definitely don't want to force this.